welcome back to another section of dentistry and more today we are going to discuss the previous year question paper that has come under the topics first one is dental amalgam next pin retained restoration third one is direct filling gold fourth cast metal restoration and last one is glass inoma cements first we are moving to dental amalgam the long essay include classify the causes of silver amalgam restoration failure mention its clinical signs symptoms and prevention and the short notes includes micro leakage bonded amalgam restoration delayed expansion finishing and polishing aims technique mercury toxicity mercury hypersensitivity and last one is mulling so first one is dental amalgam so this dental amalgam it is an alloy of mercury with silver tin and varying amount of copper zinc and other minor ingredients and the classification of the dental amalgam it is based on uh, the number of alloyed metal there is binary ternary and quaternary and based on the particle shape of the alloy that is irregular spherical and also spheroidal and based on the copper content there is low copper and high copper and based on the zinc content that is zinc containing zinc free and based on unmixed and uh, or admixed that is single composition and admixed composition and based on uh, presence of noble metals that is noble metal alloys and non noble metal alloys now we are moving to the composition of the amalgam alloys Uh, there is element that is based on the percentage that includes low copper admixed and uni composition here you can see the uh, percentage uh, that is um, in case of silver and uh, tin copper zinc all you can see based on the percentage in case of low copper admixed and also uni compositional now we are moving to the amalgamation reaction this reaction can be in case of lathe cut low copper amalgam in case of admixed high copper amalgam and also single composition alloys here you can see the um, reaction and this reaction is very important so you must be thorough with the three reactions uh, next one is reasons for failure of amalgam restoration major failures are first one is improper case selection next one is improper uh, cavity preparation next one is faulty selection and manipulation of amalgam errors in matrixing procedures and restoration last one is post operative factors in case of uh, improper cavity preparation Uh, it can be due to inadequate extension or over extended cavity preparation shallow cavity deep cavity somewhat like that and in case of faulty selection and manipulation of amalgam can be due to the selection of amalgam uh, alloy or mercury or improper trituration over or under carving or improper finishing and errors in matrixing procedures there will be due to unstable matrix or uh, absence of any wedges or premature matrix removal and post operative factors include uh, there is pain or sensitivity can occur and also fracture can also occur these are the reasons for failure and next one is signs of failure of amalgam restoration that is fracture line marginal ditching proximal overhang poor anatomic contours marginal ridge incompatibility improper proximal contact recurrent caries amalgam glues voids bulk fractures of the tooth or amalgam poor occlusal contact so we can see individually first one is fracture line uh, this fracture line uh, it may visible as a on the occlusal portion of the amalgam restoration especially in the isthmus region so um, this must be distinguished from the interface line which is the junction between the two adjoining restoration in the same tooth next one is the marginal ditching so it's a gap or ditching it's a breakdown of the amalgam at the margins due to any fracture or improper cavus surface margins next one is proximal overhanging uh, it may occurs due to uh, by tearing of dental floors when it is passed through the interproximal contacts 
Next one is poor anatomic contours and this uh, restoration which has any inadequate embrasure forms or flat contours it can be considered as any defective or and it requires replacement and also there is marginal ridge incompatibility and improper proximal contact. Next one is recurrent caries that is the caries that occurs due to any fracture that is present in the amalgam restoration. So probing the area with an explorer or any radiographic examination can be confirmed with this uh, recurrent caries. Next one is very important that is amalgam glues. Uh, amalgam glues it is a discoloration of the amalgam uh, that is by shown as a bluish hue through a thin shell of enamel. So it may be due to any leaching of corrosion products into the dentinal tubules or due to any color of any underlying amalgam. Uh, that is shown through the remaining thin enamel so it represents as an aesthetic failure so it also requires a replacement next one is voids these are mainly present on margins of the amalgam restoration due to any improper condensation and the tenth one is bulk uh, fracture of the tooth or amalgam so it is a sign of lack of resistance form in the tooth while bulk uh, fracture of the amalgam and it also indicates there is any lack of retention forms in the cavity preparation. Next one is poor occlusal contacts. Uh, it can produce improper occlusal functioning and unconsiderable tooth movement. And such restoration can also be considered as failures. And next we are moving to the prevention of failures of amalgam restoration. And that will be proper case selection proper cavity preparation, uh, proper selection and manipulation of the amalgam, proper matrixing procedures and restoration and also post-operative care, proper post-operative care. Next one is micro leakage. So uh, this micro leakage uh, it occurs due to any penetration of the fluids, bacteria or ion into the space that is existing between all restorative material and cavity walls and it may cause uh, symptoms like pulp irritation there will be color changes to the tooth and secondary caries and also result in failure of the restoration and this may occur due to the formation of any corrosion products in the tooth restoration surface so Next one is delayed expansion. So you can see the figure here delayed expansion that is if a sink containing low copper or high copper amalgam is contaminated by moisture in case of any trituration or condensation a large expansion can take place. So it usually starts after 3 to 5 days and it may continue up to months and the, uh, it may occur as a value that is greater than 400 micrometer. Uh, this delayed expansion is also referred to as secondary expansion and here you can see uh, the reaction that is uh, the expansion is caused by release of the hydrogen gas by the reaction of sink plus water so here you can see the reaction and this may cause this Various symptoms like there is dental pain and there is recurrence of the caries and fracture of the restoration may occur. And uh, the moisture contamination after the cavity has been filled does not cause delayed expansion. Non-sink alloys do not show this type of expansion when contaminated with water. Next one is bonded amalgam restoration. This includes objective indication, mechanism of bonding, advantages and also disadvantages. And the objective is that is to cause intermingling of the amalgam and the bonding resin before they set. Retention is by micromechanical means due to microscopic projection of the resin into the amalgam which locks into it as both set. And the indication mainly includes uh, extensive caries in the posterior teeth uh, next one is teeth with the short clinical crown height and last one is foundation for full crown restoration so here next shows the mechanism of bonding so this microscopic fingers of the resin that may incorporate into the amalgam at the interface when hardened these projections link amalgam to the resins 
next one is advantages you can give one or two advantages and also disadvantages is there next one is aims technique so to achieve a smooth plastic mass of the amalgam it is necessary to collectively proportion the alloy and mercury in case of aims technique uh, they, rec they recommends the use of amalgam and rec uh, mercury in the ratio of 1 is to 1 so this value is very important 1 is to 1 ratio next one is mercury toxicity uh, it may occur due to any chronic exposure of high levels of methyl mercury concentrated in the food um, so this mainly concentrate in the liver kidney and brain where its toxic effects are evident and uh, this may depending upon the mercury levels present in the urine there are also the toxic effects can also vary next one is mercury hypersensitivity so there is uh, this is an immune system response due to very low level of mercury so it may occur in very few individuals and it is not life threatening uh, it commonly causes symptoms or uh, uh, signs like dermatitis erythema edema of the face neck and limb and the oral signs include gingival inflammation, hypersalivation and erosive lesions of the mucosa. And this allergic reaction it may result after a few days after the removal of the amalgam restoration. So it is reported only in a very small, uh, very small percentage of the individuals. Next one is smoothing. So it's the step uh, that is done after the trituration so as to make the mix many homogeneous and also cohesive. So it can be in case of hand mixing by using any mortar or pistol. It can be achieved by collecting the amalgam in a dry piece of rubber dump and it is rubbing vigorously with the thumb and the forefinger for 2 to 5 seconds. But in case of mixing with amalgamator, this mulling can be done by um, continuing the trituration for an additional 2 to 3 seconds. Next one is finishing and polishing of the amalgam restoration. So it is uh, polishing it is performed in order to produce a smooth and shiny surface to the restoration and it is usually done after 24 hours after the restoration and uh, so as to gain its most strength and these are the steps involved in finishing and polishing that is first one is um, inspect the high points which appears as burnished. Uh, shiny areas on surface of the restoration reduce these carefully with a burr that is slightly running over the surface after that use a series of uh, finishing abrasive points that is run with a light uniform touch and a constant movement over the amalgam surface and uh, take care not to damage the carving and last step is when the surface appears uh, shiny, this polishing can be done using a soft rubber cup and an abrasive paste like pumislary. Use of tin oxide mixed with water can also produce a high shine. And this all about the first chapter that is dental amalgam. Now we are moving to next chapter that is pin retained. Um, in pin retain restoration, the short essays include classify pins in amalgam restoration, describe about thread matrix system pins (TMS), and short note uh, thread matrix system link series pin, and types of pin used in pin retained amalgam restoration and its indications and contraindications. Okay. This pin retain restoration it is defined as any restoration which requires the placement of one or more pins in the dentine so as to provide adequate resistance and retention form to the restoration. So this is the definition of pin retain restoration. Next one is indication and the major indications includes uh, first one is extensive tooth loss questionable prognosis is a foundation economics and also age and health of the patient in case of geriatric patients uh, the spin retained restoration is more preferred next one is contraindication uh, in case of contraindication uh, it includes the occlusal problems uh, that is when the patient has significant occlusal problems the 
been treated restorations are not indicated aesthetics uh, if aesthetic is preferred the pin amalgam restoration is avoided and in case of assist difficulties that is in case of posterior tooth areas also the pin restoration is contraindicated now we are moving to the types of pin there are three categories of pin that is cemented pin friction locked pin and self threaded pin so we can see each one that is first one is cemented pin it's a stainless steel with the threads or striations in the figure you can see uh, the threads and striations uh, and the size is 0 0.0182 to 0 0.030 and some of the advantages is there is ease of placement uh, less internal stresses and the disadvantage is least retention next one is friction locked pin uh, so this is a stainless steel with the thread and the pin channel is 0 0.001 smaller than pins and here the uh, disadvantage is the pin placement is difficult but there is internal stress is increased and it is two to three times more retention than cemented pin so the figure of the friction locked pin is seen here next one is self threaded pin so it is a stainless steel or titanium with gold plating and there is wide range of uh, pin size and designs and uh, the pin placement is easy it's five to six times more retention than the friction locked pin there is increased internal stresses and it is the most popularly presented pin here you can see the figure of the self-threaded pin now we are moving to the thread matte system pin and it, it is the most popular variety of self threaded pin that is presently available in this system the pin that is made up of stainless steel or titanium plated with gold uh, the pins that is available in four sizes that is regular medium minikin and minuta and in the figure you can see the four that is uh, regular medium minikin and minuta and now we are moving to each one that is regular it is the largest diameter pin uh, and it has considerable stress and maximum dentinal grazing and to minimum it is the next smaller diameter pin it, but it has less stresses and dentinal grazing minikin it is it has the diameter that is less than that of the minimum pin but it has very less risk of dentinal grazing and it is the most commonly used is minium and minikin. The minuta it is the smallest size of pins and it may provide too small to provide adequate retention. Hence it is not often used. And uh, the size of the pin they are available in different designs that is uh, standard, self sharing, 2 in 1, link series and link plus so here you can see the first figure that is standard self sharing two in one link series and also link plus first one is standard design so these pins they are 7 mm long it has a flattened head to fit into the head bench or handpiece chunk next one is self sharing design they are available in different length according to the pin design it also has a flattened head that is fitted into the hand wedge next one is two in one design it consists of two pin that is connected by means of a joint that serves as a shear line for the peripheral pin and one pin length is 9 mm and the other one that is two pin that is 4 mm long link this series design it has a plastic sleeve that fit into the latch type contra angle hand piece and this are also self sharing and it uh, after the pin engages the dentin the plastic sleeve can be discarded next one is link plus design it is similar to that of link series design it is also a self sharing but it is available a single or two in one pin next one is the advantages of the thread matte system pin some of the advantages are versatile design wide range of pin design color coding gold plating eliminates corrosion and also good retention 
and this concludes the next chapter that is spin retained restoration now we are moving to next section that is direct filling gold from direct filling gold only short notes can be asked that includes types of direct filling gold gold foil matte gold degassing and steps for placing direct filling gold first one is the direct filling gold types uh, the it's include gold foil that uh, contain sheet pellet cylinders corrugated foils platinized foils and also laminated foil next one is electrolytic precipitated gold that include matte gold matte foil gold calcium alloy and last one is powdered gold that includes gold and now we are moving to the matte gold so it's a crystallized crystalline electrolytic uh, precipitated gold that is formed into strips so the dentist can cut the foil into desired strips uh, it is commonly used in case of building the internal bulk of the restoration because of its ease of compaction next one is gold foil so it is also called as uh, fibrous gold it can be available in the form of sheet pellet cylinders like that sheet it can be manufactured by beating or rolling the pure gold into thin sheets and the pellets it is hand rolled or it is commercially pro produced next one is uh, gold foil cylinder it can also be hand rolled or preformed last uh, next one is corrugated gold foil it is manufactured by placing the thin sheet of paper in between the gold foil sheet next one is platinized gold foil so this is a sandwich of gold and platinum with platinum content being 15 percentage so this addition of the platinum it may increases the strength and wear resistance of the restoration next one is laminated gold foil it is beaten from an ingot uh, crystals that is elongated in specific direction next question was degassing so it is also called as annealing it is a process of heating direct gold materials to remove the surface contaminants it can be achieved by three types that is by heating the gold foil over pure ethanol flame or heating the mica tray mounted over the alcohol lamp or by heating in an electric annealer so here you can see the methods over which by heating by three types first one is heating over an open alcohol flame next one is over uh, in mica tray that is placed over the alcohol flame and also by heating in an electric annealer now these are the hazards during degassing it can be overheated or underheated in cases of overheating that may leads to sintering or contamination from the tray uh, that may leads to recrystallization and grain growth increased plasticity of the material and improper compaction of the gold under heating if it is not heated adequately that may leads to uh, poor cohesion between the gold pieces uh, and also porosity in the final restoration can also occurs next one is the steps for placing the direct filling gold first step is uh, build up of the restoration in that there is tie formation here you can see in the figure the tie formation uh, that's it involving the connecting to opposing point angles so starting point that is filled with the gold with a transverse bar of gold next one is banking of the walls it consists of um, covering each wall from its floor or axial wall to cavo surface margin with a direct gold material you can see in the figure the banking of the walls next one is shoulder formation that is connecting to opposing walls with the direct gold material to completely fill up the restoration and the second uh, procedure was paving of the restoration to overfill the preparation every area of the cavo surface margin should be individually covered with excess cohesive gold foil and uh, the third procedure is surface hardening of the restoration this condenser it is used with the highest possible condensation pressure in all direction on the surface of the restoration to harden the surface gold next one is burnishing after that margination and uh, sixth one is burnishing 
contouring, finishing and polishing and last one is final burnishing. This is done after polishing to make the surface uh, of the restoration smooth and it should be free from the voids. Okay, and this concludes the uh, direct filling gold. Now we are moving to the cast metal restoration. In cast metal restoration, the long essays include define inlay, indications and contraindication of inlay and uh, describe about the various bevels used in cast metal inlay. Short essays include bevels and uh, flares, cavity preparation, explain casting machines and uh, casting defects. And the short notes include bevels and a type of bevels, casting porosity, inlay, hot spot, porosity, causes and prevention. First was inlay. It is primarily an intracoronal restoration that is fabricated outside the oral cavity and it is placed in the prepared cavity. And indication include First one is uh, extensive tooth move involvement, uh, correction of occlusion as an adjuvant to successful periodontal therapy, restoration of endodontically treated tooth, retainers for fixed prosthesis, somewhere like that, 5 or 6 indications can be given. And next one is contraindication in developing or deciduous teeth. Uh, patients with high plaque or caries index, economic factor, dissimilar metals and in case of grossly decayed tooth. Next one is bevel. So, uh, the bevel it can be of various type. First one is partial bevel. In the figure you can see that involves only the, only a part of the enamel and it is not more than 2 by 3rd of the enamel. And it is used to trim the weak enamel rods at the margins. Next one is short bevel. In the figure you can see uh, short bevel that is um, that includes the entire enamel here. Uh, but not the dentine is involved and is commonly used in case of cast gold inlay cavities. Now that is long bevel that includes both enamel as well as the dentine. The figure you can see symbols both enamel and tendon and it is usually used in case of cast restoration and to may preserve the internal resistance and also retention free features. Next one is full bevel that includes all dentinal and enamel walls. So you can see here and there is loss of res uh, resistance and also retention foam. Last one is you know, uh, contour bevel. Uh, that it is given when the cusp capping is done. So, you can see how the bevel is given. Last one is hollow ground bevel. That is a concave bevel uh, that allows more space for the cast material bulk. So, shape is in the shape in the form of concave. Next one is functions. First one is flexible extension, supplementary grooves, sphere faces, etc. It may create an obtuse angled tooth margin and can also produce an acute angled metal margin. It allows direct frictional contact between the tooth and the inlay, so it enhances the retention. Also, it provides resistance to remaining tooth structures and also conserve the tooth structures. Next one is flare uh, that includes both primary as well as the secondary flares. In case of primary, it is a long bevel and the external enamel walls of proximal proportion that is 45 degree to the internal, the internal walls and the indication is that there is normal contact and minimal extension of caries. Secondary flare that is um, a flat plane that is superimposed primarily uh, peripheral to the primary flare and it is prepared on the enamel and the indication is broad contact and also there is removal of undercut inclusion of the surface defects. Here you can see the primary flare and also the secondary flare. This shows the primary flare and this one is the secondary flare. Next one is casting machine and this alloys they can be melted in one of the four 
ways that's depending upon the available type of casting machines first one is it can be melted by in a separate crucible by torch flame and it is cast into mold by centrifugal force next one is it can be melted electrically by a resistance heating or induction furnace and then it is cast into mold centrifugally third one is it is melted by induction heating and then cast into mold centrifugally by a motor or spring action last one is it is vacuum arc melted and cast by pressure in an argon atmosphere in the casting defects uh, is an unsuccessful casting that result in considerable trouble and also loss of time and the classification uh, main includes defects that is first one is distortion next one is surface roughness and irregularities porosity and also incomplete or missing detail first one is uh, gas porosity this includes solidification defects that uh, includes the subheadings like localized shrinkage porosity, micro porosity, suck back porosity, trapped gases include pinhole porosity, gas inclusion, subsurface porosity and also back pressure porosity. Next one is hot spot porosity and it causes due to the premature termination of flow of molten metal during the solidification and there is incorrect sequence of cooling and usually this brew it should freeze at last and if the freeze uh, if this brew it freezes before rest of the cast casting it may leads to porosity and the prevention of the casting defects it may cause due to uh, that can be prevented by using use this brew of correct thickness decreases the length of this brew increasing the melt temperature increasing the mold temperature flare the sprue at the point of attachment and place a reservoir close to the wax pattern and this concludes the cast metal restoration now we are moving to the glass ionomer cements it's a very important chapter and from this there will short essays like describe the merits and demerits of glass ionomer cement and its application in the dentistry short note that is composition and setting reaction resin modified gic advantages classification recent advances art and also sandwich technique so first one is classification that is according to uses we're uh, familiar with this uh, that is Total, uh, there is nine classes. Type one is looting, two restoration, three liner or base, four pit and fissure sealant, five looting for orthodontic purpose, uh, six core build up material, seven high fluoride releasing command set, eight a traumatic restorative treatment, and ninth one is pediatric glass ionomer cements. And this shows the composition of the glass ionomer cement that is can be supplied as both powder and liquid. In the powder the, you can see based on the percentage and the liquid that includes polyacrylic acid, atagonic acid, malic acid, tricarboxylic acid, tartaric acid and also water. Next one is the setting reaction of GIC. This all you know that it is an acid base reaction that between the acidic poly electrolytic and basic glass powder. So here in the slide you can see the setting reaction and these are the stages of setting reaction there is initial there is acid attack and uh, there is gelation and also hardening and this figure is very important you can make this figure in the paper so you can score more marks next one is the advantages of the glass ionomer cement uh, as you all know some of the advantages you can give adhesion to enamel and dentin anti cariogenic effect low solubility biocompatibility less technique sensitivity and the disadvantages of the glass ionomer cement also is there that is low fracture resistance, low wear resistance and is sensitive to moisture soon after setting. Some of the indications, uh, there are many indications you can give one uh, six or seven indications 
can be used as uh, Peter and Fisher's Island, Class 1, Restoration 3, 5, Root Carries, Restoration of the Deciduous Teeth, Looting Cements as a Repair Materials, like that. You can give many indications. Next one is contraindication. Some of the contraindications are uh, cannot be given in case of stress bearing areas, labial buildup, cuspal coverage, and in case of mouth breathers. Next one is very important question that is sandwich technique. So it is developed by McLean to combine the beneficial properties of glass cyanoma cements and the composite resins. So presently it is also called as laminate or bilayer technique. It is commonly used for restoring the large class 3, 4 and 5 and also uh, 1 and 2 with the direct composite resins. So this is the figure shows the open sandwich restoration and also closed sandwich restoration. In the figure you can see uh, first there is GIC restoration and after there above there is composite resin. Next one is advantages. Some of the advantage of the sandwich technique it provides favorable pulp response due to biocompatibility of glass cyanoma cement and the fluoride release from the uh, glass cyanoma it minimizes the recurrent caries. Excellent subgingival response. It better strength, finish and aesthetics. And the disadvantages is time consuming procedure and also technique sensitive. Next one is art. So, uh, it is a simplified approach of caries management and here only hand instruments are used uh, to excavate the soft caries and also restoring the cavities. Indications commonly used in case of occlusal pit and fissure cavities unless industrialized uh, countries and physically or mentally handicapped patients, children, uh, this art is used. And this is the clinical procedure. So in the first figure you can see the occlusal pit and fissure caries. And uh, second figure you can see the caries that is excavated by using the spoon excavator. And after that uh, this cavity you can see the completed caries are excavated. And by using gloved finger the cement is placed over uh, the cavity. And if there is excess cement it is removed by using a carver after that you can see the completed restoration here next one is advantages and disadvantages uh, this maximum advantages includes maximum preservation of the tooth surface there is minimal intervention of procedure and there is no need of any sophisticated uh, equipments or electricity and there is low cost of treatment minimal discomfort to patient and the disadvantages include there is hand fatigue during instrumentation and there is there will be lack of proper access of visibility especially if it is done in case of posterior extreme posterior regions now we are moving to the recent advances in glass cyanoma cements that includes first one is geomers uh, so it is very important it's a new group of material that is combined the chemistries of the glass and composite resins to achieve the best form from both of the material so uh, it consists of pre-reacted glass cyanoma cements with resin uh, and so it is subdivided into two groups that is surface pre-reacted geomers and also fully pre-reacted geomers so this geomers it has the property of fluoride release And uh, it, they are relatively new addition to glass cyanoma family. Hence, it has a long-term studies required to rate their clinical performance. Next one is glass cyanoma stabilization and protection material. So, this is a temporary restorative material that is developed for sealing the active caries lesion. And it will protect the tooth surface in case of high risk of caries patients. So, it has a pink color for easy identification. And it also releases uh, fluorides that offer greater protection to the surrounding tooth structures. Next one is amino acid modified glass and armor cement. So this is done, uh, this is introduced in order to improve the fracture 
toughness of the glass cyanomas cements polyacrylic acid copolymers with pentane amino acid residues so it have been formulated for both the auto cure and also resin modified version of the glass cyanomas cements next one is resin modified gic so this is a very important question uh, this is also a supplied in the form of powder liquid system and the powder is iron leachable fluor amino silicate glass particles and the liquid is polyacrylic acid that is modified with the pentane methacrylate groups and the hema monomers and the resin component is between 15 to 25 percent this concludes the last chapter that is gic uh, so here ends the today's section hope you all understood we will come back with another section and thank you all